All right, let's discuss the exemplary washroom design found in the Netherlands. The very first architectural feature you encounter when landing in Amsterdam is the Dutch washroom. And these are distinctively different than those found in North America. For instance, the, surgic, the soap dispensers typically have a surgical appearance to them. The faucet spouts are attached to the wall. The actual sink is typically flush and integrated fully into the counter. And they generally have a typical and stereotypical minimalistic design. Now, these comments are mostly directed at commercial buildings. And I suspect they certainly aren't unique to the Netherlands, but found throughout other European countries. For instance, the voila uh, sink faucets uh, originate from Denmark. The Opahart hygiene, whose uh, slogan is, uh, let's pull it up here. The dispensing experts come from Germany. And this company actually also manufactures Wi-Fi enabled hand dispense soap dispensers and they claim that this increases uh, usage within hospitals that they've installed them other companies such as cws boco which is quite common is an ancient 1899 established company out of germany and switzerland and i think the point is that the way that washrooms are constructed outside of north america is very different and there are th some things we can learn to clear up any confusion, the term lavatory in North American parlance means a sink or a wash basin. And this can be very confusing to those who think about it using the British usage where a lavatory is a flush toilet. The first thing, the soap dispensers. Let's first review how soap dispensers in North America look just in comparison before we look at the ones abroad. These here are North American typical commercial soap dispensers, Gojo, Perel, they're these bulky plastic, cheap looking uh, devices which are mounted using sticky pads to the sink, uh, sorry, to the mirror. They, they typically require quite a lot of hand device contact as far as surface area to operate them. They're generally uh, very ugly and uh, not that great to operate. The other option which we see quite a lot in North America is sink mounted or lavatory mounted or counter mounted soap dispensers where you have an extrusion in the actual surface of the countertop and a soap dispenser inserted inside of that. The problem with this is that water can seep through the hole which has been now drilled in the countertop. You can get mold forming around there. Uh, typically, these become loose because in order to refill them, you need to pull out the soap dispenser from the counter to refill the soap basin which is stored underneath the surface of the counter. And so by removing these frequently, they uh, become loose and spin around with time. If there is caulking around it, it often becomes moldy and hard to maintain and clean. So that these are neither of these are very good options. The other problem is that we have tried in North America at great length to install automated soap dispensers, both wall-mounted ones, which replace this plastic-looking box, as well as sink-mounted ones. But the automated dispensers are, in my opinion, always a disaster. They typically are very slow. The sensors on them often don't seem to be calibrated properly. They often don't dis dispense enough soap uh, per unit uh, aliquot that it, they dispense, and using them is very time-consuming and cumbersome and kind of a pain. Now, what do they do in the Netherlands? Well, it seems that this style of soap dispenser is most common. As you can see, it is a very thin, tall uh, box. There's it actually looks very good compared to the dispensers which we have in North America. They're typically made out of a hard plastic or out of a uh, metal material. And most importantly, they have a large thin bar on the front of the dispenser which you can operate using your hand or your elbow uh, or your forearm to dispense the soap. 
And these look very similar to the dispensers we'll find in surgical scrub suites outside of the operating room within hospitals. I think this is a great design. It eliminates all the problems we discussed above as far as having to touch a lot of the device to operate them. Because these are typically manually operated, uh, there's no delay in producing the soap. And the, unlike the plastic cheap ones above, these actually look quite good in a typical washroom. Because they are taller than they are wide, if you put them between different sinks, it also takes up less space. And because the materials are typically made out of a uh, hard uh, al aluminum or metal, you can have put a real lock on the device to secure it against theft in public spaces. So that's the first thing. The soap dispensers are really good. The second thing which is different in the Netherlands is that you quite often find the soap that the sink faucets are attached to the wall. As you can see in this image here, the sensor is located underneath and the faucet sprout comes right out of the wall. And I think this is a really good idea. By removing the faucet spout from the sink surface or from the countertop surface, you now eliminate another hole in the countertop surface. And holes in countertop surfaces, just like the soap dispensers, uh, are problematic in that they can have water leak through there, they can accumulate mold, they can be difficult to clean. So I'm a really big fan of installing the faucet, directly, the faucet spout directly into the wall. I also think that the uh, sensors that they used seem to be much higher powered than the in spouts sensors which we find in North America. And as we see in this diagram here, this was actually in a science museum and they went for a very surgical look replicating almost the exact sink type you would find in an operating room. But even here in a museum, you see the, the same benefit. This picture here in the museum also emphasizes the third component, which is distinctly different in the uh, sink design I noticed abroad, which is that they tend to use an integrated lavatory counter design. Unlike in North America, where we sit a sink on top of a counter or we mount a sink from underneath the counter and they're two separate entities, the actual sink itself and the countertop are usually one flush piece of material. And this makes sense. It reduces the maintenance. There aren't joints which are going to leak. There aren't grouting which needs to be uh, recocked. It really uh, is a better design. And also they'll merge the sink basin across multiple sink faucets. So in this picture here, we see that there are three sink faucets. And so the actual sink itself is the, very wide in the width of the wall. And this means that the water will all drain off of the horizontal surfaces and down the drain. Quite often in North America, we put a small or even medium-sized sink on top of a counter, and the countertop ends up retaining quite a lot of still and resting water in between use. And this is gross. When it does eventually evaporate, uh, it leaves water spots. And so turning most of the horizontal surface into a uh, actual uh, sink is, I think, definitely the right way to go. I'll bring up another few images which show the exact same. This is a very large sink. As you can see again, the horizontal part of this counter is functioning as a sink, not as a resting place. This picture here, you can see that the sink basin is separate from the adjacent basin, but the material itself is from a single pore. And in this example, we have a more artistic design where the depressed part where the sink is, is clear white, and the counterpart is more of a stone uh, gray beige, but if you actually look at them under closer inspection, you'll see that this is all one continuous piece of material. We also see in this photo the sink faucet, which has been mounted flush on the wall, and a vertical uh, soap dispenser. This picture kind of epitomizes uh, the right way to design the, the washroom uh, sink. 
I believe. One of the other uh, smaller observations here was that there's lots of micro sinks when you leave North America. As you can see, the sink here is, is smaller than my hand. And because there is sometimes not enough space to put uh, even a sink sprout as well as sink handles, what they've done is they've actually put the handle into the end of the uh, faucet spout. And by turning this, you can control the sink, which is a good workaround. In this example here, you also see in the top right the same concept of a surgical styled soap dispenser with a thin handle which you can depress on the front. The very last thing to bring up is that the design elements used in washrooms in the Netherlands mirror that of, you know, sort of typical European design. You have very strong geometric shapes. Uh, with very minimal beveling of the the surface materials, which makes it very easy to clean and easy to maintain and uh, mimics the standard Dutch and European design, which you'd expect. These are just some uh, pictures from the Netherlands. Even the toilet bowl cleaner, as you can see, has been uh, carefully designed with very strong geometric shapes. We have the, the rod here and the circular basin to keep it in. And here's just a handle. And there you have it. Some observations of the exemplary washrooms found in the Netherlands, which I think can teach us a lot in North America on how to design more functional uh, washrooms. I must admit, although I spent just a, a few days in the Netherlands, I didn't have time to fully measure and quantify if these washroom design elements actually change the efficiency or efficacy of the washroom experience. <laughs>